Welcome, friends. On this perhaps balmy early October morning, we are here to bear witness to the couple before us to celebrate the love they have found in one another and to honor the commitment each gives to the other. Before we continue, however, I want to mention that Bob's mother, Catherine, is in the hospital this morning. She's all right at this point, but she did need a bit of special care. Because of this, her daughters, Bob's sisters, are not also not able to be with us this morning. Instead, they are taking part in this celebration via Skype. <laughs> Catherine, Jeannie, Addie, and Peg, good morning! Oh, Jeannie's here. I got that. Why not? Alright, well still, we're glad you're here in any way possible. Again, good morning. For just about everyone, weddings are times when we are reminded of the possibilities of love. We may put on different clothes for the special occasion, some extra special flowers, come all the way from Hawaii. We may shed a tear or two when we hear the bride or the groom say, I do. For the wedding couple themselves, well, who knows? For them, the wedding is often the culmination of months of planning, making decisions together, looking ahead, a big day. And then, the sight of one's partner standing at the altar may take their breath away. For Terry, for Bob, standing here before us now, Today marks both a milestone and is also a day like many others over the last years. But today it is both their wedding day and their 10th anniversary as a couple. Not many people give themselves that opportunity. <laughs> and so we who have gathered to be with them today, do so knowing that this couple knows one another. For many couples, their wedding day is about potentials. You will do this, you will feel that. That's less true, a bit less true for us today. Today we celebrate a little less the love these two have found in one another than the love they keep giving. To one another. And that is a deep love for me. Terry and Bob, we'll have more to say about and to you shortly. But let's pause now so that all of us can be reminded because some days it seems we all need all the reminders we can get of the ways of love and possibilities open to us when we give ourselves. First, Terry's friend Jane McBride will read a slightly updated version of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's classic poem, How Do I Love You? Let Me Count the Ways. Okay? How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and by candlelight. I love thee freely as people strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion for to use in my old griefs and my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, 
smiles, tears of all my life. And it may be that I shall love thee better after thou. Now Bob's friend Michael has another reading for us. Mary Oliver's song, Wild Beast. Wild Beast by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles in the desert of him. You only have to let a soft animal love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I'm telling mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain moved across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clear blue air, are heading home again. Wherever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination. Calls to you like the wild geese. Harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the gathering things. <coughs> now, before we hear from him again, I want to thank Eugene Beer for his beautiful music today. Eugene plays piano for many groups and events in and around the Columbus including the Short Door Stage Theater and Lionel Woods Church. Eugene? <laughs>
Trump said to me not long ago, please expect that most people who marry do so long before their 64th birthday. <laughs> Bob, Terry, we know the two of you. We know you are going to go to the world today. We're here with you today because we love you for it. Bob, I've known you for a little over five years now, and yet in the weeks leading up to this day, I've learned more about you than ever before. You told me about your father, how he often recalled that at his own wedding day to your mother, the priest advised something like this. Marriage is a 60-40 proposition. And then he'd insert a dramatic pause and hit the punchline. Just make sure you don't end up on the 60% end very often. <laughs> what I didn't mention to you before was that this reminds me of a song that was popular among the younger set in South Africa when I was there 10 years ago this last summer. The song was called 5050, and it featured the refrain, 10 years after the revolution, let's go 5050. That a hip hop word in South African dialogue twice repeats. That artist and your parents' priest knew the same thing. That to win the big games in life, we have to share power, to go evenly matched, not focusing, not focus on winning all the little victories that may seem possible at the time. Because if you are focused on being on the 60% side of things, or even on the 40% side, thinking you are being virtuous by giving in every now and then, you're missing the mark losing sight of what people and couples can become with a shared end goal of another. Terry, you and I sat together in the aftermath of your mother's death. Bob, you and I have had more conversations about politics and life than I can count. And I remain grateful, as I said before, in preparation for this day, I have come to see other facets of the two of you, of the two of you, which previously I could only guess at. For example, I now know of a special ritual Bob engages in each morning. Terry told me the first thing in the morning, Bob makes coffee for them both, and then brings her a cup with a kiss each and every morning. <laughs> You've got some high fives out there. So <laughs> Terry also had this to say about Bob, and I'm quoting verbatim here. I am more me now because he has loved me so well. He We can stop right there. Because what can be said in all fairness after that? So let's listen to some music. And then it will be time for trouble. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
agree that the two of you can do that to one another. We agree to use some words you sent me to distill what this day means to you both. The two of you have done marriage before. You know the joys and the heartaches of the singular relationship. And you've known each other for 14 years. The last 10 years you've shared the same home. And you're still making a home. Still learning to work together, creating your own unique place and time. You know each other's secrets and fears and deepest longings. You are best friends. You shared your vows richly, privately with one another. So here you are, brave souls, ready to wear. Knowing what you know about each other and about life, you encourage and in love you smile and say, I do. So now, do you, Robert A. Lecter, say Teresa the Master to be your wife? And do you, Teresa A. Le Master, say Robert Lecter to be your husband? As symbols of their love, the rings Terry and Bob will be presenting to each other have special significance. As mentioned before, this is their wedding day and also their 10th anniversary as a couple. The stone for marking a 10th anniversary is the sapphire. And so Terry's ring features the sapphire from the engagement ring her boy's father, Ted Powell, gave her many years ago. Using this stone once more, Terry, is a gift to Ted's memory and a credit to both you and I. These rings are symbols marking the love you have found and the love you continue to give one another. While your partnership is not quite young, each day will bring and may bring welcome surprises and challenges in you. May these remind you that there will also always be one to celebrate with you and that the bond of love you share will carry you through. Bob, as you place this ring on Terry's finger, please say, Terry, with this ring, I be wed. Terry, as you place this ring on Bob's finger, Please say, Bob, with this ring, I do that. Bob, here, you got it. Thank you.